So how about that? Yeah, losing against Jimmy Chondo and blaming John Silver, and rightfully so. John Silver came out here, stuck his nose Introducing in the first, currently making his way to the ringside area. He is the Tournament of Death 18 winner. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Connor Clarkston. A little bit concerned for Ian on the sidelines there. Yeah, I get concerned for anybody when they're within arm's reach of Connor Claxton, especially when he's in this mood, especially when he was embarrassed two weeks ago by his opponent tonight here, John Silver. John Silver came in, laid waste to Connor Claxton from behind, laid him out, and allowed Chondo to get that one, two, three on Connor Claxton. If you ask me, John Silver is already 1 0 over Connor Claxton. That wasn't a win for Chondo. It might go down as a duck in his win column, but it's Johnny Silver. There he is, the meat man, former CZW champion, John Silver. And his opponent, currently, oh shit! And John Silver, not wasting any time taking down Connor Claxton. These two are just going to beat the shit out of each other tonight. Oh, you getting saucy off the rip, Khalif. And Skippy. All right. Connor Claxton just completely in insists against John Silver. Well, Silver, look at this. Coming back with a heavy form, and that's what he's got to do. I mean, John Silver's got to come in this thing. He's got to hit hard and hit hard often because uh, this isn't necessarily uh, Johnny Silver's type of, of, of court here. He's on the away field tonight. Yeah, well, John Silver, if it's not... Oh, oh, good God. That's what he's got to do. Yeah, you're talking about hitting hard. John Silver is probably one of the hardest hitters that we have. Not only with the feet, but also with the hands. I feel like his feet... Uh, he kicks so hard that his hand strength goes unnoticed, but John Silver, he can get it done with every one of his limbs. Oh, no. We're about to see some right now, Khalif. Just listen. Oh, God. It's the calamity inside of this trash can, courtesy of John Silver. The Silver. worst part is you have no idea when that strike is coming. No idea. Just imagine not being able to see complete darkness and all of a sudden you have a light coming at you. Not to mention just a concussive sound. Right. You burst an air drum in there. It, it's all bad. It's, there's no positives. None of it is good. None of for, it is good. For Connor Claxon. There's a little, another one there for safe measure from John Silver. Look at this. Connor Claxon already going to the outside. Wisely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're right. That could be wise. That could be a wise move because, oh, wait a second. Already sec. busted open is the 2019 Tournament of Death winner. I mean, we've seen what Connor Clax can do outside the ring. Maybe this is a good idea for him. Not just getting some space, but maybe he's trying to lure John Silver into something. Oh. Kicks to the midsection. Those are the most violent kicks you will find in professional wrestling oh, yeah. John Silver. Here we go. Got to make sure we get it right. Oh, God. Well, if Claxton was trying to lure John Silver into something, he's absolutely failing right now. <laughs> but Silver is handling things on the outside of the ring as ref Ryan T checks in on Claxton. I don't think Claxton's going to give it up to a little bit of blood loss. I doubt it. And as you oh, said, this man. is not necessarily John Silver's forte. But clearly, he can get it done. This does not look good for Claxton. Oh, he's going to go. He's going to take a lap all the way around as John Silver. Getting all the oh, 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 oh. Oh, Right man. in the face of John Silver from Connor Claxton. That might be it. Just get him in the ring and pin him. But you know what? I don't think just a one, two, three is going to satiate. Connor Claxton. I think he wants more than that. Yeah, it's just evident in his right hand. Claxton going for that staple gun. Claxton wants to make uh, make John Silver pay for two weeks ago. Whoa. Taking tips now. Oh, no. Oh, right to the face with the side of that staple gun. Hit him with the butt of the gun. Oh, no. 
We've seen this in the past. Good God. Looks like he caught him right in the peck there. In the pectoral. God. The well-defined pectoral region of John Silver has just been penetrated. Very well-defined. Pause. I mean, I've put, I put dollar bills in between some pectoral muscles before in my day, but oh. never quite like that. Oh, God. He didn't stop giving him money. He's only going to keep doing it. Oh. Silver now. $2. And now Silver. Silver going to go for a bit of retribution right to the face of Connor Clexton. Goes John Silver with the staple gun. Okay, the staple is one thing, but you know what I'm real nervous about? You know how dirty and filthy and gross <laughs> money is? And Connor Claxton has an open wound on his forehead. This is disgusting. He's probably going to catch it. Something. Uh, oh, no. Money is not Not to clean. the cheek. Not to cheek. Good God. Oh, we're just stapling random parts of faces now. I gotta, I gotta concur with the crowd. I think it's not just him. They're both sick Fs. See, I'm, I'm toning it down, Emma. Oh, okay, well, do as you do. It looks like John Silver is wearing dollar bills as pasties to cover his nipples. <laughs> Circa Sable 1998. <laughs> oh, unreal. We're just and more. We just get... He's got a... It's, we're getting a lot of money here. Yeah, oh, on the other side. Oh, my God. John Silver is stapling $3, I believe, <laughs> to the cheek. To the cheek. You know, you remember back in the day when Captain Lou Albano would walk around with rubber bands in his cheek? Yeah. You're like, what? How does that happen? Maybe a baby Connor Claxton stapled. Oh! I don't know. Or, or a baby uh, John Silver. Yeah, this is uh, this is not good. They, although I will say that collectively between the two of them, they've got way more than I've got in my pocket. Oh, uh, you didn't hit the pay window yet? Nah, it's not there yet. Oh, Welcome man. to my fucking world, bitch! Oh! Paintbrush right across the face, and now up and right down to the... I wouldn't say the floor, but there was an open chair yeah, right there. Yeah, he's got that chair there. Oh. And of course, Connor Claxton saying, now this is my world. Welcome to my world. This is what Johnny fucking Silver Yeah, I, I mean, to. I'm struggling to think of a time when John Silver wrestled in this so, sort of environment. I mean, I remember the, the, the ladder match he had with Alex Reynolds. That was That's cool. close, but, I mean, that's not a CCW rules match against a tournament of death winner. I don't, not at all. That's it now peeling silver off the off the ringside area. Yeah, I mean, there's almost no way to prepare for a, uh, a CZW rules match against a former Tournament of Death winner, uh, or, or the current and reigning yeah. Tournament of Death champion, uh, you know, if, if, if you look at it that way. Uh, the most recent. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, man, face first into that open chair. Clackton! Drop kick right to the skull of John Silver. Cover one. Silver wisely grabbing that rope. Great ring awareness from John Silver. Oh, yeah. John Silver knew exactly where he was. There's no fucking rope. Connor Claxton, of course, visibly frustrated at not being able to get the pinfall there. Well, Connor Claxton saying there's no rules and he shouldn't have broken up the pin. But at the same time, Connor Claxton got up off of the pin. So, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm not going to go any further in case Connor Claxton hears this. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Trouble. He's a guy I try not to piss off a lot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, because I can find myself turning in, this, around. in this situation. This don't look good. Up on the shoulders. Silver now fighting his way out of it. What are we going to get here? John Silver. Frankensteiner from the top. Big super kick whoa. right to the jaw. He caught him right on the button. And now, John Silver, he's looking for a oh, spin doctor. Good God, that's it. Cover one, two. Oh. Claxton able to kick out at the very last second. Still alive is the Tournament of Death winner. Crowd, of course, chanting for the meat man, John Silver. 
down nothing but back elbow. Come on, you fucking bitch. Came charging in, nothing but boot. And now Claxton, this I gotta say, this is this is not Claxton's territory there. Oh, certainly not. Oh, oh God. Knocking the money off his head. One way to get rid of it. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh, he's gonna no, toss no, off. No, 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 no. Oh God! Jeez, cover! One, two, go! Human flesh against the ridges on the bottom of that trash can. I'll break your back. axton has got to be in an enormous amount of pain. I don't know how he kicks out of a thing like that. I don't know how you decide that A, you can kick out, and B, you should. Exactly. Like, there's no point. Yeah, I can. Doesn't mean I want to. And what's this? Johnson. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, that's a. He's got that kick pad covered in thumbtacks. We saw this from Silver in the past. John Silver so adept with those kicks, and now to, to add the, the, add, the, the extra dimension of that, that, that kick pad covered in thumbtacks. This could destroy Connor Claxton. Just think about how, how bad those kicks are just in general. Exactly. This does not bode well for the 2019 Tournament of Death champion. Oh, no. No. Uh, should fasten it. Oh, oh God! John Silver mercilessly going to town on the midsection of Connor Claxton. You ain't got shit. Fuck you. Oh, all to the oh, face. The oh, God! Kicks. The Kawada kicks in the face with the no, thumbtack no, no, kick no. Oh. pad. Caught him fireman's carry into the oh. open chair. This so back. John Silver. And knee. Yeah. Silver. Oh. That was neck. God. That's it. One, two, throw. Two count only. And now Claxton has to be wondering what he has to do to take out the best of the best winner, John Silver. Oh, that is unreal. Connor Claxton with those last couple of moves he put on John Silver. He targeted the, the back inadvertently the leg the knee did you see how it landed on the chair oh. awkwardly and then the neck with a pile driver and still not enough to put john silver away not quite and now flexing went to his little playhouse under the ring there this door covered in barbed wire you remember this, shit from last night? this is his wheelhouse this is this is what he does yeah and he's gonna find the perfect place to put that door wrapped in barbed wire. He's wisely positioning it there just to make sure that he's got it straight. Don't take too much time there, Connor. Took a while. John Silver catching that right. Oh, begins to Gary. Blackson missing with the clothesline. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wow, he just no, jumped no, no. Up. Oh, God! Into the door covered in barbed wire goes Connor Claxton. Oh, Not and again. One, two, three. That's it. Here is your winner, the Meat Man, Raw Dog, John Silver. John Silver successful tonight against Connor Claxton. Bit of retribution from the former CZW World Champion. You know, I, I'm not going to say that this is an upset of any sort because John Silver, former World Heavyweight Champion, is not an upset when he beats anybody. But when you look at the circumstances going in here, the CZW Rules match, an environment that John Silver is not used to, against Connor Claxton, somebody who is well versed in the art of ultra violence, having been a Tournament of Death winner just six months previous. Uh, they seem to be the, the deck was stacked against John Silver here tonight, but against the face of adversity, John Silver was able to pull out a victory. I mean, he felt things in this match that he hasn't felt before, but he was able to pull through, and he was able to put that combination on. I'll tell you what, when he yoked him up, 
in that crucifix bomb, launched him through that door and finished it with that knee. That's an emphatic finish here to open up Cage of Death 21. That's great for a man who's, as, as Connor Claxton put it, never taken a light tube. And get that money. That's right, get that chicken. About these three individuals. And remember, they're coming off a loss to the Skulk just a couple of weeks ago. Are they going to be able to rebound? I don't like their oh, eyes. No. Jimmy Rave, though, on that crutch. Of course. Introducing team number one, representing the legacy of CBW. Here are the good guy, Israel, Steve Monster Mac, and Jimmy Rave. Jimmy Rave gained two victories over Griffin McCoy. Which Griffin McCoy ended up blaming his girlfriend, his then girlfriend Valentina, for the loss. Those two broke up. Now Jim Griffin McCoy blames Jimmy Ray for basically destroying his life. I mean, you see what they're being greeted by on the way out. Griffin McCoy, Ellis Taylor, Charlie Tiger, flanked, of course, by the CDW Wire champion Jordan Ollie. And their opponents being accompanied to the ring by the CCW Wire champion Jordan Oliver. And this is a, uh, I was going to say, this is a very rare moment. Griffin McCoy isn't talking, but he, he, that's what he does best. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Wait, what, what do we have here? And ladies and gentlemen, just to reiterate, they are motherfucking gatekeepers of the combat zone. Young, dumb, and pro. Charlie hit that Zandig pose, right? Um, listen, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a couple of things right here on the rip, off the rip. Um, one thing might be unpopular. I like young, dumb, and broke. I like their attitude. They're brash. They're young. They're cocky, confident. You have to have that in this sport. But what I don't necessarily agree with. It's the fact that they refer to themselves as the quote-unquote motherfucking gatekeepers of the combat zone. Because, let me tell you something, Khalif. This is my, the ninth cage of death that I've been with CCW in official capacity. My 13th one that I've attended. I've been around here for a long time. And you gotta do some serious stuff to refer to yourselves as the gatekeepers. And I'll tell you what's not serious. Losing to the Skulk two weeks ago. That's not serious stuff. They're going to have to come hard against these three veterans. These three guys that they're facing over 60 years of in-ring experience. They're going to have to come hard tonight in, in order to call themselves the motherfucking gatekeepers of this place. And I say that as a fan of these guys. Absolutely. I mean, you're, you're not alone as a fan of these guys. I'm a huge fan of Young Dummy Brook. But to your point, you got to earn it. You gotta earn it, and you earn it by winning matches like this one here tonight. But look at this, Azriel going to work. He just whipped up on Alice Taylor. Now he's going to work on Griffin McCoy. And, and you know, he, he popped in here just a couple weeks ago, did Azriel, surprise return. And he looks better than ever. Absolutely. Charlie Tiger, it's a bit of the powerhouse there of, of young, dumb, and broke. Whoa. Tiger, Tiger getting caught. Well, Tiger, Tiger caught. Tiger found himself in an octopus. <laughs> How about that? Got a whole zoo in the middle of the ring. Domino. Well, I guess the octopus would be at the aquarium. Yeah, Not so it's like two different. Yeah. So it's one is in Camden and the other is in Philly. Okay, we're making a day out of it. <laughs> but uh, Charlie Tiger, he's having a bad day right now. Azriel took him over with that arm drag, and his day is going to go from bad to worse. Steve yeah. Monster Mac. Yeah, we talk about Charlie Tiger being the powerhouse of YDMB. Steve Monster Mac, unquestionably the powerhouse of the old school here tonight. Oh, yeah. If you're if, if, if you're not lucky, uh, you might find yourself tossed into a wall. Oh, this, this <laughs> is not going well for the clout chaser. 
Oh. The midsection from Azrael. Yeah, he caught him right in the bread basket. That's going to oh. drive all the wind out of the Ooh. Ooh, nice kick. Very well delivered right to the back of the skull of Charlie Tiger. Yep. Yeah, when Charlie Tiger was least expecting it. Where the hell's Ellis Taylor going? Taylor and McCoy. Try, this is, they, they, they try the history out. It doesn't work. They just shoot away like a bunch of flies. Mm. And now, but look at this, Tiger going, to, going on the eyes of Azrael now in the torture rack. Oh, toss him right into his own corner. Azrael now in that sit-down position. Charlie Tiger, oh, to the face. While the other members of YDNB catch him at the back of the head from the outside. Cover, one, two, two count only. I'll tell you what though, Charlie Tiger very wise. He dragged Azrael all the way to his corner. So if he didn't get the pinfall, he would be able to make the quick tag, which is exactly what he did. I mean, that's, uh, that's a little bit of veteran experience that we're seeing out of the youngsters. A big chop there by Griffin McCoy. And these guys, you know, the, the term well-oiled machine is tossed around a lot, but it really, it, they deserve it. They yeah. do deserve that. I mean, these guys, oh, man. When it comes to their tandem offense, unmatched. Two. You count only. I'll tell you what, you know, like I said, they might be brash, they might be cocky and all that, but they, they you know what, they do put the work in. Uh, you know, they, they're studying stuff. They're always coming up with stuff. Uh, you know. Might not like their attitude, but they can they they have been able to get it done in the ring. They just have to do more of it against competition like they're in the ring with right now in order to call themselves, rightfully call themselves what they've been calling themselves. And of course later tonight, Jordan Oliver will defend his CZW World Wire Championship against AR Fox. Count only there from Charlie Tiger. Yeah, you know, we always talk about uh, how momentum can play a part here in pro wrestling. If uh, if young, dumb, and broke are able to win here, you know, you get that positive feeling. Jordan Oliver is going to go into his match against AR Fox, uh, you know, with a more positive mind. It, it, Absolutely. And, and Oliver's been able to get it done a lot. Yeah, man. He's just a few days away from being the second longest. Wire champion of all time. Breaks the eyes across the ropes. Oh, hard into the corner. There goes Azrael. Kick to the back of the head. Now Azrael going to the second rope and a drop kick. Azrael, he's got to get out of there. I mean, the lion's share of this match has been, uh, he's been in the ring. I mean, there was that brief period where Matsumak was in there, but it wasn't for very long. Oh, oh, almost almost had Jimmy Rave there. Missing the tag there was Azrael. Did not make hand-to-hand -hand contact. He was very close, missed a hand. Yeah, just uh, a few inches away. And now Griffin McCoy able to tag in, and now in comes. This is the match. This is the match. Griffin McCoy and Jimmy Rave. Oh, spit right in the face. It's a little over a month ago. Griffin McCoy just tore the, the bandages away from that torn calf of Jimmy Rave and just attacking him. That raw muscle. Bye bye. Close line takes Griffin McCoy down near leg hook with the back press. McCoy able to kick out. Yeah. Now it looks like things are breaking down. It looks like we got action on all sides of the ring, outside, oh. inside. And now McCoy off the rope. Rave up and over, and then there's that injured, again, that injured calf. Jimmy Rave. And it, hope he didn't. No, just pull don't, something. Just get on him, Griffin. Don't. Yeah, you, you don't necessarily need those other. Oh, was Ray paying possum? Ray faking. Goading in the other members of Young, Dumb, and Broke. Whoa, look at this. Oh, oh. from dusk till dawn. Into the cross base. Come on, guys, let's go. But Young, Dumb, and Broke. 
the numbers advantage here while Monsamak and Azrael are on the outside. Taylor trying unsuccessfully to kick Monsamak off the side of the ring there. Tiger got it. Oh! And now Griffin McCoy going to work on that injured left limb. Yeah, Jimmy Rave was playing opossum a few moments ago, but I don't think he's going to be faking it any longer because they're starting to go to work on the leg. Oh, he to the face. Big spear. Oh. And this is that tandem offense I was telling you about. Like trio offense. Yeah, trio offense. Kelly Tiger now continuing to work on that injured leg. Crowd trying to get Jimmy Rave back into it. Come on, Jimmy! Come on, Jimmy! Jimmy Rave, he was reaching out for that tag, but he was a long way away. Yeah. Oh, oh, right to the knee. Yeah, it's one of those spots where you would expect him to go to the back of the head. Instead, Charlie Tiger continuing to work on that leg of Jimmy Rave. Uh, you can see Jimmy Rave, he's uh, he's not in a pleasant place right now. You can see the pain on his face as he's reaching out. This has got to be a, a, a tremendous amount of pain for Jimmy Rave. Rave able to get to that bottom rope. Tiger going right back to work. I tell you, I mean, I feel like the referee should have made Charlie Tiger break that whole thing up. He allowed Charlie Tiger to pull Jimmy Rave away from the rope and not make a full break. There's a lot of bad blood here between Jimmy Rave and Young Dumb and Broke. Coy now putting the boots to Jimmy. Oh. Drop kick to the face there. Boy, now tagging in, tagging in Tiger, who tags in Taylor. Oh, what is this? Now, what, what, what the hell's happening here? We've got a trio of tags here. They're trying for a, a triple team here, but Jimmy Rave, look at this, backdrop, arm drag. The experience. Pass by, tag and out. And comes Monster Mac. Steve Monster Mac taking out Griffin McCoy, Charlie Tiger, Ellis Taylor. The overhand right just laying everybody to waste. Oh, now going for a clothesline. McCoy off the ropes. McCoy, oh, and over. Big back body drop by Steve Monster Mac. To the corner. Back. Back and forth. Oh. Drop kick bulldog combination out of Monster Mac. Oh, kick to the face. Griffin McCoy getting his boot up there. Back to the corner. Monster Mac. Big. Oh, almost to the outside there. Oh, clothesline. Right to the ring apron. Dylan Tiger to bring it back. Body drop to the outside. And now Charlie Tiger and Griffin McCoy on the outside. Steve Monster Mac. Has Taylor up. Oh, this ain't gonna be good for the Hellboy. Not at all, Azriel. Oh, good God. Double stomp to the back of the head while he's in the press slam. Wow. And the old school dominating Young Dumb and Wait. Broke. What are we, no way. Oh, double suicide, double tope suicida. Monster Mac is tope. And he landed on his goddamn feet. Steve Mack did a suicide dive and landed on his feet. Like it was no big deal. What the hell? This is crazy. What TMP might be dead? Oh, unreal. Yeah. And this is what, just what, the second match that we're having here, Cage of Death 21. Join us in the conversation, hashtag COD21. Oh, at VMLJ, at Leafington. And these guys are just adding each other's face with these slaps. Absolutely. Griffin McCoy able to use that speed, putting together a combination. Griffin McCoy met with that boot to the midsection. Steve Mack now. Trying to get his footing on the on the ropes. It wasn't going for him. Yeah, but wisely not giving McCoy the time to reach the big power slam. Cover one, two, oh! Ooh. Ooh 
How close was that, MOJ? I mean, I'll tell you what, that was two and three quarters. If, if not a little bit more. Now, Mac, this time successfully scaling. Yeah, but Charlie Tiger. Charlie, to look at the strength of Charlie Tiger here. Has Monster Mac up in that fireman's carry position. Rip McCoy stopped to the back of the head. Oh, wow. Beautiful. How did Charlie Tiger whip Steve Lack around like that? Both legs hooked. Oh, almost. Only a two count. Here comes Azrael coming into play. Northern Lights. And oh, the the, good God. That might be, that might be the last we see of Charlie Tiger. Need to the midsection of Griffin McCoy, and again. Just back and forth, knees to the gut. This is the fourth one now. Ace Crusher off the ropes that time, getting a little bit of spring. And of Did course, Azriel. It was Young, Dumb, and Broke who cost Azriel that, that wired championship last month at Night of Infamy. And now Jimmy Rave. Yeah, who's the legal man? I mean, who, who knows? How does the ref keep track? I don't think he has been. <laughs> I would have given up a long time ago. Oh! To a reset. I think he just hit the reset button on Ellis Taylor's spine. At one point in time, that was called the gonorrhea. Oh, man. Is it... Oh, headbutt! That's like three regular people headbutts from Charlie Tiger. Look at that faraway look in his eyes. He might have knocked himself into next week. Yeah, he's always got a... Oh, 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 my God. Dumped on his head. Yeah. McCoy. He's trying to hook up Mac for a suplex, I think, but Mac elbowed his way out. Big super kick. Caught Mac sleeping. What is this? Rip McCoy, drop kick to the side. A monster Mac, and now it's McCoy and it's Rave. And it's McCoy hoisting Rave up in the turnbuckle here. A couple of right hands for good measure. Oh. Rough landing there. Taylor there going for uh Taylor trying to interfere, Tiger trying to interfere, not happening. And then that kick again to that injured left leg. Rave able to free himself there. Ooh. Riffin McCoy. Yeah. Oh, the the belt pin combination. Here. Three, that's it. YT and B has defeated the old school. Riffin McCoy pinning Jimmy Rave here in Cage of Death 21. Of Charlie Tiger, Hellboy Ellis Taylor, and Moosey Boy, Griffin McCoy, Young, Dumb, and Pro! And you know, Khalif, I gotta tell you, honestly, that's gonna eat at Jimmy Ray because look at the pinning combination that was utilized to pin him. It, it was pure wrestling. It was the Alita arm drag takedown transition into the seatbelt pin perfectly. Held the shoulders down to the mat. One, two, three. No chicanery, no shenanigans. Young Dumb and Broke picking up a big win here. And they had to pick up more wins like this. A few more like this, and then I think they can call themselves the true gatekeepers of this place. But they got to win those matches. I like the attitude, but we got to have the output. Still a lot of action to come here tonight. Of course, Jordan Oliver will defend his wire championship against AR Fox. There will also be a five-way scramble for the number one contender to that wire championship at a future time. You got the new aces right fucking here. And of course, oh yeah. boy, we're about to be blessed. KC Navarro. None of these people are Casey Navarro. Now furious, he brings five people to the ring. 
Of course he does. This is the this is the blessing. There's gonna be as many people on the outside of the ring for Casey Navarro as are inside of the ring for this match to happen. Well, you need as a, a business five manager. Way. You need a head of public relations, head of merchandising, a bodyguard. Let the company to the ring. Shut up! Shut up! Stop talking! Stop talking! Stop talking! Jay Shut Free. your fucking ugly ass up! Jay Free, the business hey, yo. manager. All oh, you ugly, fat and lazy, smelly pieces of New Jersey trash. Wipe the crust between your eyes and get ready to witness greatness. I am the big time Jay Free. The best business manager in this whole business. We got the head of merchandise who's flying in a plane and fresher than paradise, Gino Gotts. This guy right here, Mr. Z. We got the this protege who's gonna be a star one day, Boom Harden. That's it. We got the biggest bodyguard you ever seen in your whole life. the head of public relations, a.k.a. the British sensation, D.O. Ivory. And we are the blessings for the guy, your Lord and Savior, the blessed one, K.C. Navarro. Are y'all mad? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Since this is Cage of Death, we decided to do something special for y'all. We decided to do something a little nice. Give y'all a gift. KC's gonna bless y'all. So if everybody looks under your seat right now, look under your seat, check them out, you'll find absolutely nothing, you gullible pieces of shit. <laughs> Bro, my man KC's the next up. He's the blessed one. He is the future CCW Wire Television Champion. You, you don't have to tell me. I know. He has been in the past three months Chris Bishop and KC Navarro. So he's definitely coming in with a bit of an advantage. I mean, yeah, he's got to be like brother Leon Ruff successful last month as part of the scope against YDNB. Very impressive. Could he be tomorrow a like the start? Much. 
But now, I mean, Gabriel Sky is in here. Like, now he finds himself in singles competition. Uh, it's going to be a weird transition, especially in a matchup like this where you have not just one opponent, not just two, not three, but you got four opponents to worry about. You're by yourself. You're used to being in a tag team. Uh, Gabriel Sky, he's going to have to really find a miracle, I think. Yeah, and if you're uh, Jordan Oliver or A.R. Fox, one of those two men is going to go on to face one of these guys. And look at this. The entirety of the blessings have now made their way into the ring with the exception of Aaron Allen. Oh, got to do that. <laughs> There they go. Yep. They, they didn't stand much of a chance. Grand opening, grand closing, as they say. Well, if you're going to bring all those guys to the ring, you better make sure they they can handle you. Hey, could you, could you take more than just that, uh, that one kick? Oh, jeez. Now Chris Bishop. Oh, to the oh, outside. Matt McIntosh. Yeah, that was a uh, Chris Bishop. You, you has a little retribution on the mind for Matt McIntosh, I'm sure. Absolutely. Those two went at it. Now we're getting a look at the, uh, at the next gen. Yeah, these guys, I mean, <laughs> they talk about high flyers. These guys are ridiculous with oh, yeah. it. Leon Ruff. Wait, where's Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Gabriel Scott, where's, don't even know where he's going. Where's he going? Leon Ruff. Good God. Stop kicking the teeth out of Gabriel Scott. And look at this guy, KC Navarro. Look at that, putting a bad mouth on Ruff as well. I mean, I remember when Casey Navarro first started coming around this sport. Nice, young, humble man. Yeah. Now what? He's blessed and he acts like that. I don't understand. I don't understand the same thing. Yeah, well, Keith Christian is long gone. Casey Navarro lives on. And look at this. The speed, the agility. Oh, but Leon Ruff wisely able to counter. Very nimble. <laughs> J.C. Navarro. Love to see these two go one-on-one -on -one, one day. Look, I mean, if you're going to get this championship, you got to eliminate folks some way or another. It's kind of a shitty thing to do. Yeah, it's pretty shitty. No, all around, no. Chris Bishop, baby, put the boots to it. You see K.C. Navarro's head just bounce off of the canvas. Double stops there by Chris Bishop. Got a little bit of break dancing going on here. That's right. Right to the leg drop. The missing ingredient, Chris Bishop. Oh, down to the knee. Rolls through. Oh, missed the kick. McIntosh had it scouted. Underneath. And McIntosh. McIntosh. Oh, my God. Oh, jeez. Oh, that rule. That was... I love it. More of that, please. Yes. Oh, yeah. Up and over. Look at the athleticism of Matt McIntosh. Cartwheel. Oh, big kick to the face of Chris Bishop from Matt McIntosh. McIntosh. Oh. Nice shooter. Beautiful. He should have been him. He should have tried to go for the pin attempt. There's nobody really around, but here comes Gabriel Scott now. And, and I started to say wisely, Chris Bishop rolls his way to the outside, but again, unless you're the one making the pin or submitting someone, you do not win this match. This is not elimination style. Oh. Counter and counter, back and forth. And Gabriel the Sky. To the Rana with the rope assistance. Kick to the bridge of the nose there, it looked like. And now Gabriel Sky looking at. Oh, he slipped up on the middle rope there. Yeah, a bit of a lower drop kick as a result. Yeah. Effective he, nonetheless. I mean, yeah, but if he was able to get more of that drop kick, if he didn't slip there, he, he might have been able to pick up the victory. That's the thing. It's, 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 it's a matter of. Uh, it's, it's the little things is what I'm trying to say here. As uh, I was watching the precarious nature of what just happened there to Gabriel Sky, I saw Casey Navarro creeping up on the outside. Casey Navarro. Going for the suicide. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a bit of a dick. But look at this. Chris Bishop taking out everyone and Aaron has the steering goal. Yeah, Chris Bishop talking that mess. He's paying a white city. You got the black.
blessings. Dino Gatz is down. Somebody please help up Dino Gatz. Well, he's going to need help to get up. I feel like he's a little bobhead. Oh, 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 hey, hey. <laughs> to <laughs> Now, Gabriel Sky going to work with Chris Bishop as Casey Navarro and Matt McIntosh in the ring. Oh, up and over goes Casey Navarro. <laughs> no members of the entourage. I was going to say, under the Blessings Corner. If you got that many guys, and nobody catches you. you gotta get new guys. You really have. Here comes McIntosh. Whoa! Taking out the entire field of blessings. It's Matt McIntosh. And that's how you want to jump for the blessings in 2020. I mean, yeah, but at this time, you know what? Pick up one of them and chuck them in the ring and pin them. Win this sucker. Get that wired championship opportunity. Oh, shit. Oh, Gabriel Sky almost kicked the face right off of Leon Ruff's skull. Sheesh. Gabriel Sky has put in so much work. Earned this opportunity. Oh, jeez. Gabriel Sky. Moonsault again, Above taking the out the entire rest field. All motherfucking day! In case you were wondering for how long. Now, this is the right thing to do. Pitch somebody in there trying to get the win. But Leon Ruff able to get that right shoulder up. Yeah, you got to stay on him now. Of course, Tristan Ty recovering from surgery. What a wish the best in the. And of course, a speedy recovery. Please. Love to see a buff. What the heck? Action. Leon Ruff. I've never seen that. Yo, he just did an upside down F dog 20. Oh, man, right to the midsection. Pop up by Chris Bishop. And now Casey Navarro. My boy. Yes. Oh. I poke. Of course. Smart. I, it's smart. You can get away with it. Navarro has found a second level of confidence. I mean, we remember a year ago when he faced off for the Wired Championship. He yeah. not the, he's not the same guy. Definitely not. Oh. Gabriel Sky caught in midair by Matt McIntosh. McIntosh saw him coming. Oh, Sky able to get out of it. Oh. Oh. to Gary to the back of the head. Gabriel Sky, did he get it done? Oh, oh that. You want to run? You want to run? Navarro. You can be blocked, bro. Bang it off into the corner here. Absolutely. Oh, how the hell is Dino Gatz in the ring? What's he doing? He got the ball in there. Not a good place to be. This has nothing to do with merchandising. Well, that's what he does? Yeah, he's the head of merchandising. He's got the entire the whole squad out here. Gabriel Sky is going to fly. Up top. Oh. Navarro able to use that quickness to get out of it. TNA kick. Right to the midsection there of Casey Navarro, the blessed Casey Navarro. What the? Wait a second. Whoa. Navarro able to just hang on. Oh, my God. Cover. One, two, Gabriel Sky. Oh. Almost had a new number one contender to that wire championship. I tell you what, that would be a way to get yourself solidified in the singles ranks. Absolutely, another bad apple. About to be on a receiver and able to counter it. Nice transition. Big bomb. Hangs him. Oh my God! Cover, one, two. Ruff able to break it up. Yeah, and if Ruff wasn't there, We'd be hearing uh, Matt McIntosh's music playing right now. Absolutely. Oh, Underneath. Yeah. Oh. Oh. The bad apple Matt McIntosh looking to become yeah. the number one contender to the Wire Championship. Has Leon Ruff up. Oh. I was able to kick out of it. 
Leon Ruff. Man. Leon Ruff went for everything and got nothing. Yeah, you got to see what you want to hit there. Took his eyes off the target and paid dearly for it. Now yeah. the bad apple. Oh. Oh. Found himself a knee strike. It's not what he was originally going for, but something nonetheless. Leon Ruff again. Telegraphing these maneuvers is Leon Ruff. Did, tell me he did that to sucker him in. Please, please tell me yeah, that. Yeah, that's totally what it was. I, I'll go with it. I hope that's what that was. Why not? Chris Bishop going after Leon Ruff. Big forearm. Fuck you. I'll tell you, he's a, he's a roughneck, this Chris Bishop. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to wonder what he's thinking at any moment. No. Well, Leon look Ruff. at that. Oh. Ruff. Too quick for him. Up and over. Leon Ruff. Oh. Hits it that time. Finally got something to Leon Ruff. And now Ruff looks like he's heading to the top turnbuckle. Leon Ruff. Oh. Beautiful swanton cover. One, two, Leon Ruff. Oh. Who was that? Is that Maven Bailey? Maven Bailey, the president of the combat zone. is down. Casey Navarro big frog splash cover. One, two. Casey Navarro is the number one contender for the Wire Championship. He is the winner. Casey Navarro out on top of this five Man contest to see who's going to be the number one contender. Navarro reigning supreme here tonight. And I mean, thinking the implications that are coming out of this matchup. I mean, Casey Navarro, he's going to be facing one of two men. Either AR Fox and something, uh, you know, I've never seen that. So I, I would love to see that match AR Fox and Casey Navarro. Or we're going to see old rivalry with Kendall. Casey Navarro and uh, Jordan Oliver. Yeah. Either way, I mean, we're looking at we're looking at a good future CCW Wire Championship matchup. Not only here tonight, but whenever this contest takes place. Yeah. I mean, whether you're starting off a new feud in AR Fox or rekindling, I mean, there's so much bad blood between Casey and that Jordan. That title's mine. Man, it's mine. I don't give a damn for Jordan or Fox. It's mine, and you don't have to tell me. This thing could go either way. That man is blessed. I mean, either way, Casey Navarro is going to be looking forward to whoever he faces for that wider championship. But you got to think a big part of him wants it to be Jordan Oliver to get retribution from that loss last year. Maven Bentley coming in and got a microphone in his hand, Khalif. He's got a microphone surgically attached to his hand. He's constantly talking. Whoa. Look. You got nothing to be ashamed of. You, listen to me, Chris. You are the future of this business. You are the type of young man I need. Look, look, look I'm here to help. Think about it. Everyone associated with me becomes champions, Bishop. Look, all you have to do is fall in line behind me. When you follow Bentley, you become a champion. I know Nate and Dave aren't listening to you right now, but you, you, you can be a champion if you listen to me. Maven Bentley trying to create some dissension in the ranks of the rep. Of course, Nate Carter and Dave McCall, the CZW Tag Team Champions, decking Maven Bentley as Chris Bishop. And you can't say that he doesn't deserve it. My turns. My turns. Had to do it to him. Somebody did. Chris Bishop decking Maven Bentley as the missing ingredient. Very shiny. 
continues on here in the combat zone. That is the music of Alex Reynolds, accompanied by smart Mark Sterling. Alex Reynolds, a total freak fest. Introducing first, currently making their way to the ringside area from Southampton, New York. Here are the team of Smart, Mark Sterling, and the handsome devil, Alex Reynolds. He just introduced him as the handsome devil, Alex Reynolds. I don't know what looks more luxurious, that robe or the hair. That's a lot of, I don't know if that's perk plus, I don't know what's going on in there. Is this just a walking troll? Of course, this whole thing stems from Reynolds' jealousy of Anthony Green and Ava Everett. Making Alex Reynolds has been creeping up on Ava Everett. And their opponent! Again, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just a reminder: this contest is no holds barred. Alex Reynolds meeting Ada, Ava Everett in the restroom in the ladies' locker room, actually just running up on her. That's a weird thing to do. Very weird thing to do. What the heck? Was, oh, little super kicks. Sterling and Reynolds are both looking to punch, and they got themselves crossed up. Hate to see that happen. Well, or you like to see it happen? I don't mind it with these guys. Yeah. Retro AG and Ava Everett. Oh. Everett taking down Alex Reynolds. Reynolds up and over the top rope to the outside. AG just won the Royal Rumble. Hey, there we go. Whoa! Oh. Serio Tope Suicidas. From Anthony Green and Ava Everett. It's been 100% dead this whole time. Sterling and Reynolds better figure something out real quick or else this is going to be a short night for them. Absolutely. Of course, Alex Reynolds throwing that fireball just a, 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 about a month and a half ago into the face of Ava Everett. Everett has not forgotten that. I don't necessarily think that's a forgettable thing. Of course not. Oh, uh, yeah. Forgot about the fire in the face. Oh, damn. Oh. <laughs> Alex Jeez. Reynolds. Now, I was going to say he had the upper hand there on AG. Oh. Not happening. Ever kicking the back of the head there of the evil genius now, Smart Mark Sterling. Oh, oh Sterling. Uh, almost had a genius-like idea when he was utilizing, what was that, a crutch or a stick? I don't know. The crutch looked like. Yeah, a crutch. And uh, oh, no, one shot at them. That crutch left behind by Jimmy Rave earlier. Big top to the, the chest of Smart Mark Sterling. Oh, Everett could be in trouble. Yeah, Reynolds got a handful of Everett. Oh, jeez. You want to talk about changing the complexion of a matchup without your right hand, you're done. Man, some people without their right hand, they have a real bad night. <laughs> That's very true. Real lonely. Thank you. Thanks for, I forgot about that. I'm a Southpaw. Hey, <laughs> ever now dumped into the ring. Now we're gonna go pillar to pose. Oh, reversal. There goes Everett into the corner. Got her boot up. Her, we're like a shoe. Athletic shoe. Man, oh. hard into the canvas by Alex Reynolds. Planted her. And now Anthony Green with that chair to the midsection. Have one smart Mark Sterling. Chair to the back. Of the attorney. 
of Alex Reynolds. Yeah, that chair turned into some twisted steel. Yeah, it's just twisted, twisted metal at this point. Twisted steel wielded by the man with plenty of sex appeal. <laughs> It's the mustache, really, that pulls it all together. It is. is it. Ooh. That ain't going to save him from uh, his back getting run into the steel chair there. Reynolds now sitting on top of Alex Reynolds, uh, of Anthony Green. Had that chair right in the sternum of Retro AG. You know, they had a strong opening to the AG and Ava Everett, but since then, uh, Reynolds and Silver really turned things around. It's been all Reynolds and Silver since that, that initial burst. And now driving that boot into the face of Anthony Green as he talks the, the crap. Hey, oh, double double leg. Leg. Down. Oh, yes. And now Smart Mark Sherling, the recipient of a kick to the midsection. Big spine buster. Absolutely planted her. AJ. Oh, man. And Alex Reynolds setting up that chair on the inside. Going after Anthony Green. Reynolds into the room. Oh, head first into the seat of the chair. Kick to the midsection of Smart Mark Sterling. Make sure you get the, the positioning he's looking for. Oh, yeah. Better go. Better go for all of it. Uh oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, man. Hung up the wrong way. Cover. Two. That's a three count. Anthony Green. Got to get vertical because Alex Reynolds definitely is. As now a door being brought into this foray. Now what's he gonna do with it? What? Is it to wedge it into the door, into the uh, the ropes there. Okay. I've never seen that before. You got to stand up there. Okay. Interesting. Uh, not often used, but uh, we'll see what they have in mind here. This could be from the mind of the evil genius, Mark yeah, Stern. I, that's, I was gonna say. Sorry to. No, 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 no. You, you got it. Good idea. He's <laughs> your heat, brother. <laughs> oh, no. This is not this ain't gonna good be for good. Anthony Green. Oh, and Ava Everett in the break it up. She may have to save this match. Everett's going crazy. On and she's throwing everything she's got behind those chair shots. Right. He's a woman possessed. Heard that? Yes, I did. <laughs> did they hear that? They might go and feel it. <laughs> they ain't gonna be good. Oh, this does not look good. We've seen this before. Oh. Sterling able to break up that destroyer. Oh, that'd no. be a danger town oh, destroyer. No, no. Oh, oh! Dumbass into the face! I like that. Of Smart Mark Sterling! Oh. I think that's smart in name only. What's that? Uh oh. Let's go for that goozle. Wasn't able to hit it. Big pickup there from Alex Reynolds. And Ava Everett trying to get her way out. Ava Everett. Can Danger she hit Town it? Destroyer. Oh! oh! The corner of the chair. Cover him. One, two, three. Oh, what? Oh, he must have grabbed the rope. It was outside oh. of our vantage point. I, 
I thought something was fishy right there. Yeah, but was... Nick Papa Giorgio right on top of things. Yeah, he right down the middle, that Nick Papa Giorgio. Yeah, how dare I doubt Papa oh! Giorgio. Oh, no. Keister first on the uh, softest part. No, the hardest part of the ring. Oh, yeah! Good thing. <laughs> exactly. Get that, uh, that chair platform set up on the outside. Yeah, because uh, those chairs aren't part of the ring, but it's going to be uh, harder. Exactly. <laughs> Mark Sterling. Whoa. Whoa, the Ava Taker. Oh, no. Sterling into all six chairs. Courtesy of Ava Everett. Now, Mark Sterling didn't spend that time jaw jacking with somebody in the second row. Maybe he could have slammed or jumped through Ava through the chairs or something, but no, he got slammed. He could have got something done. Didn't happen. Now, Reynolds in the corner. AG, we kick to the side of the head. Retro sexual Anthony Green. That nice reverse cross body off the top. Big super kick. Uh-oh. Well, I mean, this could make for a, a rough night as well. Can't show up all hands and no balls. Oh, my God! Right to the midsection of Alex Reynolds! The uh, lower nut sack region of Alex Reynolds has been adversely affected. Yeah, throw up that sand dig. That is the medical term for it. The lower nut sack yes, region, yeah, yeah, his balls it. got fucked. Yeah. books. Yeah. Oh, you read books? <laughs> yeah, I've seen them. Damn. You work at a What's library. <laughs> and now, Anthony Green. What's he looking Young for? Jesse of professional wrestling looking for something. Ava Everett. Maybe he's looking for Nikki and Alex. <laughs> just no, he's looking piling, for chairs. Exactly, just piling chairs, as many as they can find in the ring. Uncle Jesse not looking for his twin boys, instead looking for all of the chairs. Oh, I mean, look, you got your priorities straight. And now they're just piling up just dozens of chairs in the middle of the ring. This does not look good for Alex Reynolds and Mark Sterling. No, no, it does not. Oh, boy. Ava Everett, is she going all the way up top? She is. Oh, Mark Sterling. Pulling down. Oh, no. Oh! Get to the face there of Ava Everett. Mark Sterling's got, he's got something on his mind. And look at, look at Reynolds. He's maneuvering those chairs closer to the corner. And this does not look good for the honey. Oh, man! Oh, look Into at the face on Ava Everett. She's gone. Cover. One, two. Oh! How the hell did Ava Everett kick out of that? I, I have no idea. I, I look. I looked in her eyes after impact, and, and it's uh, like Glenn the lights Silver. are on. The lights are on, but she's all the way across the fucking country. There you go. Forget nobody's home. Jeez. How? Alex Reynolds is. He's got to be completely perplexed. No yeah. idea what to do to take this woman out. Now we got another door. Oh, jeez. This is not good for Ava Everett. Because uh, AG, he's, he's not around. No, he's not. He's out of Sick commission. individual. Oh, wait, no. There he is. Here comes AG. Super kicks. Oh, man, just ping ponged off that door. Door is made in Japan. Oh, man, just as tough as they get, the door is 2 and 0 oh, against Mark Sterling. I heard the doors are really big in Japan, <laughs> but not as big as Uncle.
Uncle Jesse was in Japan. You remember that, right? <laughs> Uncle Jesse, huge Japan. Oh! If at first you don't succeed, oh. try again, and then try again, again. There you go. Alex Reynolds now. That chair to the face of A.G. Nearly ricocheted off of A.G. and yeah. hit Reynolds. <laughs> Bouncing all over the place. That really would have been something out of, like, uh, WWF 2K19. Ah. Boy, does that game <laughs> suck. Oh, man. Doesn't exist. Alex Reynolds now stalking Ava Everett as he has been over the past few months. Uh, and it's not like she's been moving all that much. She's in a bad way. A handful of Everett's hair. I, you know, honestly, I think she just kicked out that last time out of instinct, not really understanding what the hell's going on. Because uh, she hasn't been moving. She has, Look, dead weight. Yeah. She's out, think man. The muscle memory. It's the limp body there of Ava Everett. What does Alex Reynolds have on his mind? Oh, and look at, oh, this is where the creepiness. Complete creep fest, Alex Reynolds. Oh, yeah. He's gross. And now, Anthony Green. Anthony Green from behind, that's right. The previously dislocated nuts of Alex Reynolds. Wait, look, look at the look on Ava Everett's face. That's the Ava Taker right there. She's going for it. Big play through the door from Ava Everett. Cover. One, two, three. That's it. Ava Everett and Anthony Green have defeated Reynolds and Sterling here tonight. Here are your winners. The team of the Platinum Honey, Ava Everett, and the true sexual, Anthony. pick up some modicum of retribution here tonight against Alex Reynolds and Mark Sterling. And hopefully, finally, they can put this thing behind them. See AG and Ava Everett soaking in the adulation from all the folks who came out here to uh, the Coliseum here in Four East, Cage of Death 21. And we thank those that are here in the building, but we also like to thank all of you watching us all around the world on Fight TV, the MLJ here alongside Khalif Bryant. And uh, we're what, uh, just halfway through? Because we got title matches coming. We got a cage of death coming. Oh. oh, man, we got big things coming. It's going down later tonight, right here live on Fight TV. But right now, it's a party. We got Retro AG, Ava Everett, successful here in the combat zone. It's always good to have a little bit of partying before things get real serious. AR Fox has a chance here this evening to become a three-time Wired Champion. Uh, an accolade, I'm sure, AR Fox would love to have. Uh, He'd he be joining uh, some pretty illustrious company.
Glover has been the Wired champion for 427 days. He has tasted defeat only once, and that was at the hands of John Silver in the best of the best tournament. There you see it, the Wire Championship being held high in the sky by senior official Nick Papa Giorgio. And Let me tell you something, Khalif. Uh, this is a matchup that ever since, you know, when it was announced, I got very excited for. Uh, you know, it's kind of weird to say it, uh, but it's sort of like a clashing of the generations of CZW. It, yeah. it, it's weird to feel that way about A.R. Fox, but he really is an elder statesman here. He's been around for uh, close to a decade, off and on. Meanwhile, Jordan Oliver relatively uh, uh, fresh in his career. Yeah, he's still very new to the business. I don't know but, but I mean, he's had a lot of success, as you as you mentioned. Oh, whoa! It was a bit of an unorthodox way of making sure that you don't get nailed by A.R. Fox. But wise, nonetheless, to the midsection there. Oliver made his debut with in CZW with Young Dumb and Broke in June of 2018. And has been on a tear ever since. Oh, look at Fox. Look at the way he rolled right in. Look at the athleticism. Nothing but kick to the midsection. Yeah, look at what in the world was that? <laughs> the counter there by Jordan Oliver. Yo, if he would have nailed that kick, that would have been like uh, that Showtime kick, Anthony Pettis. That would, yeah, man, that would have been highlight reel for the next, for the for the 2020s. I mean, this is a kid, he's only, what, 20, 21 years old? And he's, he's light years ahead of where he should be. I'm going to say he's 21, just in case. I think 21, that's a good one. I mean, if he isn't, he isn't, whatever. I think he's 21, fuck it. And they are Fox riling up the crowd here. Why I, feel, I feel weird guessing ages of people <laughs> considering of who we're sitting next to at the vending table. Wow. Well, uh, that being said, that being said, <laughs> Jordan Oliver, this has been in his wheelhouse. This is what he does. He breaks the momentum of his opponent, and this is his means of controlling the speed of his, uh, of his wired title defenses. Brilliant move from this young man. Uh, you know, he's been doing a lot of that as his title reign has progressed. I mean, he's really found a way to, uh, to, to really set the pace and tone. Uh, you know, when, when it gets uh, out of his control, rolls to the outside, slows things down. That's under the skin of his opponent because we know AR Fox, he's go, go, go all the time. Uh, you start to, you know, cut that up. You start to make that a little bit choppy. AR Fox doesn't wrestle as well. Right. And now, as you can see it right there, but good God, right to the sternum there of Jordan Oliver went AR Fox. Fox now off the ropes. Oliver meets him. Whoa! Look at the awareness there. Shoulder to the midsection. AR Fox rolling. Big kick to the back of the head of the wire champion. Look at that. AR Fox in great shape. Oh! Heavy shot. The crowd chanting A for AR Fox. See the clothesline in the corner there. Jordan Oliver in a rough position. Oh! We've seen, the yeah, we've seen that out of AR Fox time and again over his tenure here in the combat zone. Nobody else can do it quite like he does. Oh, face first. Elevated flatliner of sorts, I suppose. Back press with the far leg hook. And it seems like we say this every month, but this could be the, the biggest threat right now to Jordan Oliver's championship reign. <laughs> and he always seems to get through it. Get your punk ass up. Yeah. Oh, a little bit of bad mouth. Right, yeah. Fox. Hey, you gotta get that punk ass up. Okay. Oh. Look at that takedown. Yeah, man. Like I said, nobody does it like AR Fox, man. Good lower body. 
and over. Came down heavy on his uh, upper back. Awkward landing. Came down like a sack of dirty laundry. <laughs> back in the college days. Oh, to the back of the skull. With the Matthew. <laughs> Jordan Oliver from the far side of the ring. Oliver, Tobey, Suicida, driving Fox into the guardrail. Yeah, I like that from, from Oliver. Not only did he dive into AR Fox, but when he made impact, he made sure to push AR Fox back first into the barricade. Right. Some of the CZW faithful putting a bad mouth to AR Fox. Big chop to the challenger from the champion. Kind of surprised that so many people are clapping for Jordan Oliver right there. Well, I think that's I think that's out of respect. I, I think that you got to respect the hustle of this young man. He's been all over the place defending that that wired championship. AR Fox looks like he's in a bad way. You see the way he's limping. Ooh. I don't know what happened, but AR Fox is not moving around all that well on the vertical base. Jordan Oliver. Taking his time, big drop kick to the side of the skull of A.R. Fox. I'll tell you what, this is a golden opportunity for Jordan Oliver if he notices it and he can take advantage of it because if you're in the ring with A.R. Fox and he doesn't have his leg strength, uh, it becomes increasingly easier for you to win the match. Yeah, much more winnable situation. Wisely, Oliver gonna roll Fox into the ring. Think about how much of the offense from A.R. Fox is generated from his leg strength, whether it's running, jumping, leaping, uh, just basing and, and, and able to hoist somebody up over his head. And you can see Fox favoring that, that, that leg. Jordan Oliver. The disrespect, look at that. Oh, this is nothing but disrespect. He's made of disrespect. Oh. Chop to the challenger again. You're going to have to hit Fox a little bit harder. Ooh, Fox with lefts and rights. Fox not able to move the way that he needs to. Moving well enough. Well, or at least he was for a moment to get Jordan Oliver onto the apron. What? Oh, man! AR Fox is inhuman. <laughs> Just the speed, the timing, the quickness. On a bad leg. On a bad leg. And he made it look easy. And now Fox, vertical again. You should have seen the way I tried to get out of bed this morning. It was <laughs> difficult. He, AR Fox, did all that like it was nothing. Unreal. Oh. Back elbow from Fox. Yeah, I'll go on the apron there. Oh. Look at Fox. AR Fox. Enzigiri. Numbers game comes into play. Young, dumb, and broke out here to create the distraction. Fox up and over into Charlie Tiger, Griffin McCoy, and Ellis Taylor. Quite honestly, I'm kind of surprised it took this long for them to get out here. I'm surprised that Jordan Oliver was actually shooting the fair one for as long as he did with Fox. Big facts. I mean, that's been the story of his title reign. Can you get it done on your own? Get out Now Nick Papa Giorgio. Sending the rest of Young Dumb and Bray. Wait, where is AR Fox going? Jordan Oliver's on the outside of the damn room. Oh! Coast to coast. Barely caught him there, but got enough of it. Got with the toe tips. That's right. AR Fox. This is him on a bad wheel. Yeah, man. God. On top. Sent on Atomico. AR Fox got all of that one. one Back press, two, near left. Oh. Oh. We almost had a new champ lead. <laughs> the whole title range just flashed before his eyes. He's in black and white. Happily enough. AR Fox now going to take some time to regroup and re strategize, but don't give Jordan Oliver too much time. And look, Fox still hobbling. 
He's been able to uncork some of that offense still on that bad leg. And he's superhuman. Oh, my God. The impact. Oh, into the apron, into the canvas. Big cutter onto the champion. Roll up, cover one, two. Oh, Jordan Oliver again. The ring awareness, grabbing that bottom rope, realized he didn't have the energy to kick out. Did the smart thing and got out of it. I don't think AR Fox realized how close Jordan Oliver's uh, arms were to the ropes there, or else he would have likely pulled Jordan Oliver in a little bit before going over with a jackknife pin. But another thing, uh, Jordan Oliver's limbs are very long, lanky. If you're not used to that, uh, not a lot of wrestlers have limbs as long as Jordan Oliver. He's able to reach out just a little bit further. Oh, small package, cover one, two. It can happen just that quickly. One of these guys will go on to face Casey Navarro. Mm. And either one of those matches is going to be. Oh. Go. Go. Oh, got a handful of tights there, right? Oh. Right in the chin. They are foxes, dazed. Again with the two count. And Oliver's in a state of disbelief. Gonna take a little bit more to take out AR Fox. Make sure you got all your teeth there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> this has been a back and forth battle. It really has. Fox now. He's trying to get out of this waist lock and he's turning into it. Yep, there you go. Oh. And to Gary. Back of the head there of the the wire champion. He's the first of three championship matches. Jordan Oliver is vertical. Jordan Oliver from the far side. Oh, got caught with the super kick on the apron. Jordan Oliver was trying to go for something. I'm not sure what, and he paid dearly. Oh. Look at the resilience. Oh, Help. about it. Oh, no. Oh no. oh no, oh, what are no. you doing? No, 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 no. Oh God. Apron tombstone. Not a lot of real estate to work with out there. Not at all. Able to get it done though is the champion. Oliver now. Setting up for it looks like a, a package pile driver. Sat out with it instead. Driving the wind out of AR Fox's body. Try to get a win there. He had both legs hooked. I mean, that's I mean, it's what you gotta do. High impact move with a immediate pinning combination right on top of that, but you gotta get the right combination of move and pin attempt. And now Fox grabbing that left leg again. And against somebody like A.R. Fox, I mean, we one of the most resilient wrestlers we've ever seen in this uh, combat zone wrestling. Oliver, slingshot. Oh! The land. Rolled through it, got caught with that boot. By the challenger. Oh my God! Did you hear that? I heard it, and luckily for me, I didn't feel it. But Jordan Oliver felt all of it. Combat zone wants it again. Here comes Fox. Oh! Got a running start, like a bicycle kick that time. And can he feel it slipping away? Does Jordan Oliver feel his reign coming to an end? Going for low main pain. Whoa, whoa. Oliver able to hold on. Yeah, AR Fox didn't have the spring in his legs necessary to pull off that move. Oh, lost in the sauce from three quarters of the ring. Throw, oh my God, he kicked out. How the hell did AR Fox kick out of that? 
I can't think of anybody who's who's been able to kick out of that from from Jordan Oliver. I mean, AR Fox is superhuman. Now Jordan Oliver is really thinking, what's he got to do? His his entourage is gone. His best move didn't do the trick. Now what? You keep fighting. That's the only way you're going to wake up as a wire champion tomorrow. Oh, rough position. Oh, right between the shoulder blades that time. It's not good. Not Wait, good for the champion. Let's see. Whoa. Oh, my God. Low main German. AR Fox to the top rope. Could this be it? AR Fox. champion. Wow. Can't deny that, man. I didn't think I was going to see this. Big show of respect for Jordan Oliver. Wow. He's got nothing to be ashamed of. I heard the combat zone training Jordan. That's, I'm kind of stunned right now, honestly. This is the last thing I expected, but, some, you know, quite honestly, I like to see it. They are the challenges to the rep. This is Bear Country. Bear Country making their presence known here in the combat zone very recently, but mowing through everyone. Been one of the most consistent tag teams here over the past few months, including winning that four way first. last month. Currently in the ring, weighing in at a total combined weight of 589 pounds from Bear Mountain, New York. Bear Country has had the most consistent wins. These have been the most consistent as And their the opponents Rock. currently making their way to the ringside area. They are the current reigning and defending CCW World Tag Team Champions, Dave McCall and Nate Carter. The 
This is an old-fashioned hoss fight. I've been looking forward to this one since their Bear Country debuted here in the combat zone. Oh, yeah. We have four big boys tussling in there oh. for some championship gold. Bear so, Bronson and Bear Boulder. That's what pro wrestling's all about, baby. Looks like big boys fighting, prize fighting. Look at, look, at the, look at the talk there from Dave McCall to Nate Carter. Dave, Dave knows what to say to hype Nate up. They've been together for their whole their whole tenure, their whole, <laughs> their whole career. Back in the days of the Dub Boys, Nate Carter going to start this thing off with Bear Boulder. These <laughs> two just locking up. I mean, I cannot wait for this. Collar elbow tie up in the middle of the ring. No clear advantage. Yeah, it's going to take a while. These guys are going to have to chip away at each other before any significant headway gets made. And again, stalemate. Oh. Mm, heavy collision. In the far side of the ring. Nobody going anywhere. Nobody. And remember, uh, both these teams relatively fresh. The rep not in action two weeks ago, and neither were Bear Country. I mean, basically. They, they just laid out Gabriel Sky. And now, the two trading forearms. Nate Carter, Bear Boulder in the middle of the ring. Nate Carter getting the better part of Boulder. The early part of this contest, but Boulder able to turn it around. Nate Carter. Oh. Athleticism there from Big Bear Boulder. Big man can jump. Got some ups there. Yeah. The bunnies, as they used to say. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Get it up. You either had bunnies or you were buns. <laughs> Very facts. I have bunnies. And now Dave McCall and Bear Bronson. Whoa, 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 whoa. Big suplex over the top by Bronson. Yeah, Bronson is huge, oh. and he's the smaller of the two. Twisting, leaping knee strike out of uh, Dave McCall. That was cool. I like that. This was dangerous. One of the things that's dangerous about Dave McCall is his feet. Real quick, real quick. Just his legs in general. Legs, just his lower body is just. Destroyed. Go ahead, finish that. Yeah, there's no way. Pause. <laughs> no rice aroni. Look at that, just leveling Dave McCall with one hand is Bear Bronson. It's Nate Carter and Bear Boulder go at it on the other side. To the outside they go. I think it was only a matter of time before these big boys started oh. going at it on the outside of the ring. I mean, after how vociferously Bear Country called out the rep two weeks ago. Yeah. Nice word there. I like. Oh, oh my God! The, they, Dave McCall just drop kicked him. Drop kicked a member of the the combat zone faithful. That fan is down. Good God! On the corner of the ring. I mean, you you, you buy a ticket, you never know what's going to happen. That guy is down. I'll tell you what. If I'm DJ Hyde, I'm kind of hoping that Joe Gacy wins, so I don't have to deal with the lawsuit. Jesus Christ! CZW officials out here trying to attend to that fan, but Bear Boulder just took out Nate Carter. Of course, the rep just recaptured that CZW Tag Team Championship in October from Anthony Gangone and Homicide after Gangone held those titles hostage for months. Yeah, I didn't like a single bit of that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! A lot of muscle into the side of the skull. Mm. That'll wake you up. Oh, what a boot! Right, it was between the boot and the railing. Was Nate Carter's head? 
Not a good place to be. Of course, Maven Bentley turning his back on the rep, costing them those championships. Oh. Hard shot from Bronson. Here comes Boulder going to crush Carter. Oh. The clothesline, cover one, two, oh. Nate Carter head first into that turnbuckle. Bear Bronson, full head of steam, oh. Ran right into the point of the elbow of Nate Carter. Nate Carter pulling down that top rope. Well, see you later, Boulder. Yeah, that's it for you. And now Dave McCall. Dave McCall so vicious. Oh, that's something new out of Dave McCall. Oh. I've not seen that before out of him. Same. What? Oh. What a move. And that's what the rep's going to have to do for this team. They got to break out the, the good China. Yeah, the heavy artillery. I do like, though, break out the good China. Break That's, out the good China. I might steal that. Break out the old China closet. I might just steal that right, <laughs> right, right off from under you. Oh, yeah. go for the flip flam. Oh, look at the. He just got pounced out of the flip flam. Big Boulder just knocked Dave McCall out of the screen. Big boot. boot. To the face. Yeah. Bear Boulder, what? A moonsault from Bear Boulder. That surely would have been the end of the contest if he nailed that. <laughs> man, that size, doing a backflip off the middle rope. Might have been the end of Nate Carter's career. And Dave McCall. Boulder tried to block the kick, but he didn't block much of it. Got him up. Can we get a bit of the flim flam? Oh! One, two, Bronson breaks it up. Bear Bronson just saved this opportunity for Bear Country because that certainly would have been it for Bear Boulder. Just leapt up in the air and came down back first. Well, everybody exhausted. This is exactly what I thought was going to happen. This is a bang out, knock down, drag out type affair. Damn right. And all four men just putting it all out there here tonight. You got the rep and you got bear country. And this thing is just going to come down to a fight. Oh, God. In tandem. Both teams is trading back and forth. Knee to the face there, big Bear Boulder. And now Bear Bronson and Nate Carter in the middle of the ring, but mostly Bear Bronson just beating the hell out of Carter. Oh, goes to God. Concussive headbutt. And a leaping headbutt that time. Both men just, just teetering over. Nate Carter, Bear Bronson up. Uh, too much time with it. Bear Boulder. Big power bomb. Oh! Into Nate Carter. Rep sandwich in the corner. What are we going to get here? I am not quite oh. sure. Oh, man. That's a lot of weight. There's a lot of mass. Oh, my God. Nate Carter at the bottom of a pileup. Dave McCall convulsing. Cover. One, two. That's got to be it. No. Wow. 
What an effort thus far by both of these teams. Yeah, it looked like Nate, uh, Dave McCall was trying to figure out where he was. He was looking around. Oh, I can't imagine what that must feel like, having that much weight crashing into you. See, this is where, in the past, Maven Bentley would, would be a factor, but and he's tried to, to reach out to repair his, his relationship with Nate and Dave, but not happening. Whoa, bit of a misstep there from Bear Country. Could that be the opening they need? Dave McCall with those chops. Whoa. Oh, spit oh, in the face. the face. Don't piss off Dave McCall. McCall up. Nate Carter. What? Wow. Oh, my God. Bear Boulder just took out the rep. That was about 500 pounds that Bear Boulder just manhandled. The strength of Bear Boulder on full display. And now, Bear Bronson heading up, as is Nate Carter. Yeah, what's Nate Carter? What doing? are we going to get here? Hey. Hey. What? Oh, my God. Inadvertent doomsday device to his own partner. They were going to uh, do that big drop splash slam, I think. Did not go to win a Bear Country intended. No, sir. Oh! Big side kick there from Dave McCall. What? What are we? Flam, flam! Cover. One, two, three. The ref have retained their CCW Tag Team Championship. Here are the winners. World's Tag Team Champions, Nate Carter and Dave McCall, the Rams. What a contest between these two teams, take nothing away from Bear Country. But tonight, like most nights, the rep ended up being the better team. The rep's out. Going into 2020 strong as the reigning and defending undisputed world tag team champions. It's got to be a good feeling. Absolutely. This is brotherhood right there. Dave Carter and Dave McCall successful here at Cage of Death 21. Still to come. The CDW World Championship match. Oh, what's up? What do we got here? Bear, Bear Country, it looks like they're making their way back to the ring. Bear Country, what are we going to get here? The crowd's calling for a rematch. I want to see it. Yeah, I'd be down. Just saying, they, all they need is one more shot. Bring it, bitch. Let's do it again. Ooh. One more chance, like Biggie said, right? That's right. Well, bring it, bitch, like Nate Carter said. He said, let's get it. They say you want them, come and get them. Here they are. Well, still to come, Matt Streamon versus Joe Casey for the CZW World Championship, and of course, in our main event. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not just the title on the line. It's 
DJ Hyde's uh, rear end on the line, too. Right, his future here in the combat zone. Of course, if Joe Gacy wins, that's the end of DJ Hyde here at CZW. DJ Hyde now, Both seven from. years later. Just last year, they were on opposite sides of Cajun Death. Yes. Championship uh, one day short of 400 days. Huh. Slick individual. And there he is, the unwanted champion, the unwanted CZW champion, Joe Casey. And his opponent currently making his way to the ringside area. Fighting out of planet. Returned to the combat zone in August, captured that championship belt in September, and tonight he defends it against a combat zone legend in Matt Tremont. Matt Tremont is focused. He doesn't even give a And look at the disrespect, the unwanted disrespect by the champion. Yeah, I'm still not so sure about that. I saw flashes of uh, evidence that he actually does care very much about being a champion a couple weeks ago. But, hey, if, th if this is what he wants to put out there, okay, that's fine. Look, Gacy only cares about himself. And, and yeah, he... He does care about it. He cares about the fact that it's out of the clutches of the rest of the combat zone, and particularly DJ High. Have the bell for the World Championship contest. I need them. And let's not forget that the architect of this whole thing is Maven Bentley. Maven Bentley in a power play trying to become the sole proprietor of this place. As Joe Gacy now ro rolls to the outside. There's a whole lot of people with their fingers in this mess. Yeah. I mean, we've seen what? Maven Bentley get involved, Anthony Gangon get involved. Hell, DJ Hyde's wife. Where, where's, where's Joe Gacy going? Is he just walking out on this thing? What's happening? Joe Gacy is, uh, the answer to it. wait a minute. Joe Gacy getting the microphone there.
quite the proposition for Gacy. I, it, now, do you want the show on the road or what? I mean, what would that mean to, to Matt Fremont? We can all celebrate tonight, Matt. If you just let me pin you real easy, real quick right now. I think that Matt Tremont, that, that's, he's not that kind of guy. He's got too much pride, man. Way too much. We'll never see him. Uh, uh, maybe. I mean, less, less thing I thought I'd ever see is Matt Tremont just laying down for anyone here in the CZW ring. He's bled black and yellow since being a teenager. Oh! And he was just getting better positioning to take out the champion. You don't ask somebody like Matt Tremont to lay down for you. No. You get exactly what Joe Gacy just got. Even even if it even if it means DJ Hodge out of here, you know? Oh. That disc is closed line. Beat that right hand of Matt Tremont. Let's have some fucking fun! All right, let's have some fun indeed. Yeah, if Matt Tremont says that you wanna leave. <laughs> Already busted open is Joe Gacy. Oh yeah, that first right hand from Tremont might have broken the nose of Joe Gacy. That's a, that's a good way to start a fight. You break somebody's yeah. nose, uh, it's hard for them to breathe. Hey, you can't concentrate either. Like, Eyes just, water up. Yeah. Maven Bentley, of course, so desperate to get rid of DJ Hyde. He brought in the unwanted maniac, but right now the maniac is reeling at the hands of Matt Tremont. At least he was. Oh, Gacy trying to fight back here. A couple of forearms. No, Gacy. God. Breaking that chair. Under the collective weight. And Joe Gacy pointing at. Joe Gacy is on the move. Ooh. And he moved his way right into another right hand from Tremont. That call. That war call from Matt Tremont. Man, those right hands. He puts, he puts a lot of pepper on them. Yeah. So that's Joe Gacy. <laughs> Headbutt there. The champion to the challenger. Again. Now Joe Gacy. Those collective rights. We got a combination there out of Gacy on the outside. Now what's he looking for? Uh, it's like he's got a door. Is that a, is that a yeah. door? Yeah, that's a door. Sure is. Oh, that chair no good for Gacy. He, he's obviously got an idea in mind. What's the of course, you don't like what you like? the calculated world champion. Hey, no security staff out of there. Oh yeah, he's looking for steel chairs. Joe Gacy doing a little bit of rearranging of furniture, straddling that table between those two chairs. And Tremont is up right. Oh. Tremont was just biding his time. You notice he was just posted up uh, against a post. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What is he doing? What? Oh, no. Oh, my God. Matt Tremont just forcing that rod into the mouth. Nearly poking the rod through the cheek. Just, just oh, one Joe thing that is no first oral entry. No. No. Big headbutt. No. Champion getting back into it. Oh. Man, his mouth has got to be hurt. Getting stretched out like that. Uh, you ever have somebody try to push a rod through your cheek? I can't say it's ever happened to me. Uh, 
But I mean, it, it sounds pretty bad, you know? Well, it ain't good. No, it just can't be, you know? Various reasons. Joe Casey now continuing to rearrange furniture. Making sure that that door is, of course, level. Yeah. Now Joe Gacy, what's he got planned for Matt Tremont, the bulldozer? Right hand after right hand, and a third one. Tremont trying to save himself from whatever devastation Joe Gacy was attempting to, to do here. Now, now. Oh, to the thigh. Oh, stop right to the hand there of Matt Tremont. Oh. Insult to injury, hitting your face on the ring post. You see now with that chair. No, maybe not. Oh, fuck. Hand to the post. Chair to the arm. I remember it was that right hand of uh, Matt Tremont that opened Joe Gacy up right in the beginning of this contest. If he can take away that right arm, then he takes away a lot of uh, the offense from Matt Tremont because that right hand does damage. Absolutely. I mean, brought Matt Tremont a lot of success here. And Joe Gacy looking to get out of that with a sleeper hold. Gacy trying to put the big man to sleep. Very wise decision, too. Tremont looks to be out on his feet almost. Couple of back elbows for Tremont. Gets his way out of there. Super oh. kick. Right under the chin. Tremont, timber like a tree. Still just a one count. It's the one count. The challenge is still in it. Joe Casey. Looking to see what sort of toys are under the ring. And another door. There's, there's like 20 doors under there. All right, there you go. This, this, could, this could be very bad for the challenger. We got three doors on the inside. What's... One door on the outside. Hey, what's going on there? Well, nonetheless. This match, this match must be on fire. We got the alarms going. And now Joe Gacy. Thank you very much, Joe Gacy, setting up the, the tables, the doors, rather. How much fire they've been getting it. Into the door. Cover, could we get a new champion right here? One, two, Gacy able to power out of it. Two count only. Jeez, now both men center of the ring. Back and forth, right hand, right hand, trading back and forth. They don't care that this alarm's going off. They're fighting for a championship. Absolutely, and if you're Matt Tremont, God, those, those rights, those strikes. There's always time to evacuate. There's a limited time to win the championship. And uh, if you're the referee, you're just laid out. <laughs> Pretty much. Ref is down. Joe Gacy, the champion. There's just chaos all over the place. Oh. Tremont has the champion up. Tremont driving the champion into the canvas cover, but there's no ref. Two, three, four. You could have counted to 10. I'm sure there are like more numbers between four and ten, I'm just saying, but nah. Yeah, you're right. One, two, three, four, ten, why not? Referee completely out of the ring. Matt Tremont had this match won. He's waving somebody. Uh, maybe we can get another official out here. Come on, Bring him! Bring him to me! 
That Tremont calling for someone. And now, now the light tubes. Now this is the sort of championship victory Matt Tremont can take his teeth into as he tries to defend the career of DJ High. Oh, Gase is going to go through that tubes. Oh, Gacy again going for that sleeper. And he's got the back of Tremont as well. And Tremont is just limp. Tremont just limp in the middle of the ring, nowhere to go. But even if you put him to sleep, there's no ref. Good point. Oh, through the door goes the champion. Very smart way of getting out of that. Everybody's then, laid out. Who the I, hell is that? Oh. Anthony Gangone. Anthony Gangone, just this slimy individual. What the hell is he doing out here? Anthony Gangone, hasn't he, hasn't he made DJ's life enough of a living hell this past year? It's the indecencies with the wife and then the bicycle kicks. Gone's been eliminated. And now DJ Hyde. He doesn't need the light tubes. Well, what's he gonna do to Gang Gone here? Hopefully that something bad and violent. And it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Gang Gone. Up, wait, wait a minute, that, that's, that's DJ's wife, Lauren. No, no, no. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! No, no! Lauren just leveled DJ Hyde! Hyde's got a, a glazed look in his eyes! He collapsed backwards through that door. What are we seeing? She said that... She wanted less of his stuff for DJ High. I mean, she, she's got, she's obviously, she's concerned, but she, And Anthony Gangone just laughing in the middle of the ring. I'll tell you what, Khalif, I still got more questions than I get, got answers. Well, hopefully Gangone's gonna get an ass whooping courtesy of Matt Tremont. Do it! Stop fucking me! Do it! Oh, wait, no, what's this? It's, Val it's Valentina! What the hell, Valentina? With the low blow of Matt Tremont, why the hell is Valentina out here? Anthony Gangone spearing the challenger! Matt Tremont through the door, what the hell? What is, what going is happening? Oh. Discus clothesline. Cover! Ah. There's no official. No Come official on. still. Official Nick Papa Jr. right out here, my female Bentley. Oh, come on, you son of a bitch. for Combat Zone Wrestling under the ownership of DJ Hyde. And, and if he's out of here, then who, who am I working for? But him? Yes, it's, it's, it's Maven Bentley. Stop the music! Can somebody please stop that noise? when he thought he purchased the respect of the locker room. And I'm here on the last night that DJ Hyde owns Combat Zone. Well, this is a visual representation of what your life is now as your CZW world title sits in a pile of broken glass. Tonight, we're gonna celebrate. 
that you are done. Hey, remember that first night we met? Out in the parking lot in Maryland, I believe it was Baltimore, Maryland. And I attended one of your training classes. The moment I met you, I hated your guts. Every moment I stepped into CZW, I hated your guts. I want you to look at me! Look at me, DJ. And never forget this face. Because I did this to you. Gacy, I, I, I cannot believe we've seen here tonight. Well, I guess it must continue. You see, tonight marks the dawn of a new era in the combat zone. Now that DJ Hyde isn't here anymore, I guess I get to do anything I want. Yeah. Not from the ring. But the point is, now that I got rid of DJ, I still got this hunk of metal. Yeah. And I guess there's only one thing left to do. It's to prove to everybody what I already know. And beat the best the world has to offer. Shelly here, here in the comments zone. What? He, I haven't seen him. I've been here all day. I've been, I got here at four o'clock. I did not see him. Fire in the disco. Fire in the Taco Bell. Gacy, you want to talk about being the best? You certainly proved to me that you're a tough motherfucker. You went through that and that and that, and I don't know what he put in your mouth to make you bleed like that, but it looked very uncomfortable. When I came back to wrestling, I wanted to go back to every company that did right by me. And CCW is one of the best independent promotions. It's because of you fans. And if I'm being honest, it's because of guys like you. So I'm not gonna say anything derogatory. I don't give a shit if you're wanted or not. You're the champion. To me, that makes you top dog. So anytime you wanna prove you're the best, the best of the best even. Putting out fires. Thank God that stopped, man. Anytime you want to prove you're the best and you want to put this on the line against me, buddy, it'd be an honor and a pleasure. Well, I appreciate your kind words, Alex. I am the best. Anytime. Anywhere you want to come and get this from me, you got it. I'm, I'm still stunned. <laughs> Alex Shelley back in the combat zone is, is going to challenge Joe Gacy at some point for that championship. 
Introducing first, currently making her way to the ringside area, fighting out of Blackwood, New Jersey, this is Brittany Lynn. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention Brittany please. Blake finally getting an opportunity please. tonight for the WSU Championship. And her opponent, currently making her way to the ringside area from the Andromeda Galaxy, recently escaped from Area 51, the galaxy's greatest alien and the defending WSU World Champion, Chris Statlander. Of course, Emil Chris Statlander defeated Diamante in October to become the new WSU champion. This is her first defense of that WSU title. The beautiful championship, as you see. Referee Tori Castillo. Gonna make sure there's no, no chicanery as they look at Chris Statlander. Not a drama to Galaxy. Brittany Blake now being uh, checked, and I think these two are are, ready? are ready to go. We're underway. Chris Statlander, of course, one of the most unorthodox yeah, competitors here at WSU. That's certainly a way to put it. Uh, you never know what she's going to do, what angle she's going to come from. Uh, but she better be serious here against Brittany Blake. Whoa. Yeah, Brittany Blake, serious competitor. She may be outsized, but uh, she has never let that uh, hinder her in the past. Never. Of course, Chris Statlander now doing a smart thing there. Roll out and you know, take some time. You're a champion. Brittany Blake. Looking her out with that... Uh, Almost like a baseball slide there. Blake now with a suicide dive. dive. Yeah, it was sort of like a Lope suicide as she went <laughs> between the bottom and the middle ropes that time. And here comes Brittany Blake oh, no. going for a run off the apron. Chris Statlander oh, two things. Right to the small of the back against the corner of the ring. The hardest part, of course. I've heard that before. I've rumors. Heard, you know, there are rumors out there. Yes. But, uh, you know, when, when you have the size disparity like that, you have to make sure you have a lot of momentum in order to take a, an opponent of larger stature down like that. And unfortunately for Brittany Blake, she did not have that momentum, and she got caught in a bad way with that power bomb onto the uh, rumored hardest part of the ring. Statlander not letting up here. Oh. Don't you sit down there. Cove the two. Two count only. And it looks like to me at this juncture, Khalif, that Chris Statlander is uh, targeting the midsection of Brittany Blake. Uh, the, you saw the power bomb back first onto the apron, and now that leg drop, the somersault senton, all that into the torso. Well, yeah, don't don't let like the fact that she's an alien fool you. She's very very adept at picking a body part and just taking it apart. Is is Chris Statlander? That's the thing, it's that alien knowledge. That's what it is. It's yeah. like the, the whole thing with the, the probes. They're in like a different year. It's like so different, they don't even use numbers. That's right. Oh! Roll through, and look at the power here of Chris Statlander, able to pick Brittany, Brittany Blake up in her shoulders. Oh, she repositioned Brittany Blake, did Statlander. Oh. Roll through, Finley roll. And now Statlander, oh, second row. That moves salt. Mm. Brittany Blake just too quick, running knee to the face by Blake, and now both these women are down. Brittany Blake had enough wherewithal to get one shot in, but she hasn't had enough energy to will her way into a pinning predicament. And now Statlander back on top, even though she was the last one struck. Well, maybe not though. Brittany Blake blocking these attempts from Statlander and firing back. Ooh, back fist. Oh, that's what she's going to have to do. She's going to have to outmaneuver the WSU women's the WSU champion. 
Here comes Statlander all the way across the ring. But Brittany Blade. Knee to the face. Oh. Bulldog just spiking Statlander. Blake now headed to that top rope. Brittany Blake. That's some trademark Brittany Blake for you. Go for the cover and almost got the three count. Tori Castillo saying two. Brittany Blake has longed for so long to become this WSU champion. This is an opportunity she's fought for for years. Blake made her debut at this event in 2015. Man, she's been away from WSU for a little while. This will be a quite the return. Oh. oh! Missing with that double stomp to the back of the head. If she would have nailed that, Brittany Blake could have been oh. the new champ. Caught on the shoulders there of Chris Statlander. Wait a sec. Oh! Face first goes Brittany Blake. Cover one, two, two count only. What? And Statlander can't believe it. I mean, it was a high impact move, but you, when you don't get the three, you can't ask questions. You got to just keep on going. Don't hesitate. And see this, and Brittany Blake, she's she found this opening underneath the kick. Look at this, Brittany Blake. What's she going to get here? Oh, DDT. man. Good God. The second time that she spiked Statlander on her forehead. Blake now, like, two. Mm. Just a, a few inches away from having a new WSU world champion. And Brittany Blake, it looks like she's going for the bad omen. And uh, this is her signature submission hold. Ooh. Something that she's had to utilize given her, uh, given her size. Uh, she doesn't have enough body weight to hold a lot of the shoulders of her opponents down. She tries to go for the submission, but Statlander able to get out. Able to power out. Oh, oh man, big scissors kick to the back. Cover one, two. Oh! How close was that? The official showing us it was just that close as Statlander positions Brittany Blake closer to the near turnbuckle. Chris Statlander from the top rope. Oh, missing. Kick to the back of the head. Brittany Blake on Dream Street. Now she's upside down. Oh, now oh. what? Oh, roll, oh, roll through. through. One, two, three. New WSU champion, Brittany Blake, has defeated Chris Statlander. Here is your winner. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Cage of Death 21. This is MLJ alongside Khalif Bryant, and you just heard it from Larry Legend, a brand new WSU champion crown just now here. Brittany Blake, the new WSU champion, Khalif. That's right. Brittany Blake fought very hard, very long for this contest, and it looks like a we're going to get here a bit of a show of respect between Blake and the former champion, Chris Statlander. The alien from the Andromeda Galaxy. A bit of respect from the former and the current WSU World Heavyweight Champions. Of course, tonight, the career-long rivalry between Jimmy Lloyd and Brandon Kirk comes to a head in our main event, Inside Cage of Death. This is Brandon Kirk with Casey Gattall, Kirk, his wife, in tow. Tonight he is stepping in to the most dangerous match in the combat zone, the cage of death against his sworn mortal enemy, Jimmy Lloyd. I've seen these guys fight numerous times uh, in various different match types, but never in a match that is the cage of death. <laughs> this is a uh, few and far between. This is the boss fight. Man, this really is it. The final fight. The, the final battle of 2019, as it were, here in the combat zone. <laughs> oh, 
Think about it, when they're climbing in, they have to think, this is what I'm actually about to do. Yeah, I mean, this is actually sink happening. In. He's got to sink in at this point. Yeah. So everything is set up exactly the way they want it to. It's time for the and intros. Now, ladies and gentlemen, up for the introduction. This is your main event of Cage of Death 21. No. A fight that can only be decided within the confines of the Cage of Death. At the sound of the bell, the man in charge of this contest, senior CCW official, Nick Papa Giorgio. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout can only be won by pinfall or submission. And now, the participants. Introducing first, standing to my right, being accompanied to the ring this evening by Kendo Casey Kirk. In his career here at the Combat Zone, you have seen him as a survivor of the Tangled Web by putting down the bulldozer, Matt Tremont. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the for these two competitors at Cage of Death 21. Motherfucker! We're underway, MLJ. Sure as hell are. Brandon Kirk. Jimmy Lloyd, the, the rush of adrenaline from these two competitors right now has to be off the charts. Oh, yeah. they. I mean, I feel like at this point in time, they realize that their life is about to change. Yeah. This is a life-changing match. Uh, the things that people go through in a match like this uh, takes... Oh, man. Rip the Band-Aid off, why don't you? Glass already getting broken. Oh. These gentlemen going through panes of glass. These competitors. Fuck you. Jimmy Lloyd. 
Another pane of glass and gets now, destroyed. There's only one that remains. Brandon Kirk is up in that fireman's carry. Brandon Kirk through that final pane of glass. And if you're going to get this thing started, that's how you got to do it. Uh, yeah, the first four offensive moves of this match uh, broke some panes of glass, each one of them. That's right. 100% of the moves in this match have, have broken panes of glass. Oh, look. Jimmy Lloyd, he's got another pane of glass that was just laying around Son in of there. a bitch. It's just there, you know? That is the cage of death. Uh, talk about an emphatic start. It's two to two, right? Yeah, two to two. If we're keeping score, I don't know. And Brandon Kirk is busted open. Uh oh, man! Kirk exploded that 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 the thing of light tubes on his way into that pane of glass. Double the damage. One, two. Kirk's already already busted open there at the at the head. It's it's a wonder. It's just that. Already the ring is just shrouded in glass. Oh no, oh no. Jimmy Lloyd just driving that glass into the face of Brandon Kirk. Now, again with another big shard of glass just jabbing it into the face. Brandon Kirk, as Casey Catal Kirk looks on at her husband. Right hands from Jimmy Lloyd. And, and, you know, at this point in the match, I mean, well, we're only a couple minutes in, but there's really no safe place in the oh. ring now. There's uh, shards of glass pretty much covering the entire ring canvas. Yeah, I mean, you think, you figure every time anyone, anyone goes to the ground, uh, you got to contend with that broken glass everywhere. You got to watch where you put your hands when you're trying to get up. You know what I mean? Just... Wind up rolling the wrong way, get all sorts of small cuts. Jimmy Lloyd uh, getting a two count. I'm glad you stopped me before I went into that Puff Daddy track, so. <laughs> it's now Jimmy Lloyd and Brandon Kirk make their way with the rake of the eyes there by Brandon Kirk. Kirk with that forearm. Lloyd meets him with one himself. He's two just duking it out in the middle of the ring. Oh, and again, the familiarity. These two have been battling each other their entire careers. It was like a mirror image of one another. Just taking each other out with dueling pump kicks. I don't know who got the worst of that. I, maybe Brandon Kirk, I feel like. Uh, I, I feel like Jimmy Lloyd's kick was a little bit more effective. You can see Jimmy Lloyd, he's picking up a light tube on his way up to his feet. Oh, that's uh, so Kirk. Kirk. We got a bit of a duel. Oh, man. Across the head of Brandon Kirk. Oh, good God. Effortlessly across the head of Jimmy Lloyd. And now, round two. Kirk with two. Lloyd with one. Oh, God. Oh. Same time. I just said the familiarity. These two guys just know each other. They, it's like they know what they're, they're planning to do next. And you see Papa Giorgio trying to get all that, uh, all the big tubes out of the way. Yeah. The broken, that's never good. Not at all. Very dangerous. Yeah, very good eye by you there, Emil. And I mean, it's just the little things. You see the gloves on the hands of referee Nick Papa Giorgio, the safety glasses, trying to ensure that he doesn't become a casualty to whatever happens here tonight. There's going to be casualties, though. Oh, yeah. That's going to be certain. Jimmy Lloyd, bicycle kick to the face. Boot to the face by Brandon Kirk. Big clothesline, taking down Lloyd. One, two. Two count only. Lloyd able to kick out. Kirk now up to his feet, waiting on Lloyd. Oh. Super kick from Lloyd and a second. Whoa. Oh, Canadian destroyer. 
That's what being a different boy is all about. Jimmy Lloyd just eating that. Right. Kirk able to kick out. You heard Casey Catal screaming at the top of her lungs. And I'm be honest, that, there wasn't a lot on that kick out from uh, Brandon Kirk there. No, and he could be in trouble. Jimmy Lloyd, face is covered in blood. Lloyd now putting the boost to Brandon Kirk. This is your main event of Cage of Death 21. Straight down across the crown of the head. No protection. That's that's just. And of course, another pane of glass being introduced. It uh, uh, looks like. Uh, well, maybe, maybe. No, no. Gotta have panes of glass. We're, we're, we're entering the holiday season. There's no relationship there. I don't even know why it came up. I was just trying to figure that out. <laughs> yes, panes of glass are a wonderful. Uh, Holiday gift giving idea, especially if, uh, especially for that deathmatch wrestler on your Christmas list. Trying to make the relationship between Scrawny Shawnee and Kevin McAllister as they've both constructed houses of horror. And we're looking at one right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> imagine being, uh, imagine Home Alone, but instead of uh, Kevin McAllister was Scrawny Shawnee. Oh, oh, God. Uh, a little, a little like bit of right levity. Now. A little bit of levity before what I'm sure is going to be something brutal. As, uh, Jimmy Lloyd, what's he got? Oh, oh, God. He's got that light tube, that broken light tube right to the skull there of Brandon Kirk. As Casey Gattal looks on. And two chairs. Just, just chuck that broken light tube of Jimmy Lloyd to Brandon Kirk. And now, you see, uh, what's this? This wooden barbed wires platform, it looks like, just being brought into the ring. Up. Just, get up, get just get more toys as, as time goes on here. What a thing. That's, wow. when you run out, you know, you just get more. It's like. Yeah, you just say, hey, give me more pans of yeah. glass. Give me a barbed wire board. We have it. Imagine just having those things in stock. <laughs> it's the uh, MZW officials work together. Uh -oh. oh, man! Kirk just carelessly touching that chair into the face of Jimmy Lloyd. Yeah, I don't think uh, it's any time for levity now. Oh, oh, man! You notice how he let go of the chair when he was swinging downward with it, trying oh, to add as much force as possible. Look, Jimmy, Jimmy Lloyd looking around like, where the fuck am I? He's looking, he's looking like me when I leave the bar. <laughs> when I wake up on the sidewalk. Ever tell you that? Anyway. <laughs> Jimmy Lloyd now in the corner. Ooh, Jimmy Lloyd, he's, he's his legs stretching. Yeah, he's twitching like. there. And what, what's, what's Brandon Kirk asking for? Kirk asking for help with this, this board. Kirk telling Nick Papa Giorgio to uh, to help him out with this. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Papa Giorgio yelling at Yeah, it's not. It's his side that fell. Yeah. He said, I did my job. He didn't want to do it anyway. Right. Did Papa Giorgio. Typically, a, uh, typically not getting his hands involved in matters such as this. But I, guess, I guess when you're locked inside of the cage of death. Oh, oh no. God. Uh, yeah, I, I would do their bidding, whatever yeah, they ask. I'm not, you know. To tell Brandon Kirk no to move in a platform like that. Yeah, I might as well just say, yeah, get on with it. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. And again, I mean, those light tubes, it, it's so effortlessly, but it causes so much damage. You never know how many little cuts can come from uh -oh. one of them. The or big forward. ones. The shower or something like that and how painful something like that could be. Where's you know, Jimmy Lloyd going? I don't, I don't know. Maybe Jimmy Lloyd's heading to the outside there. I'll tell you, Casey Gattall better watch out with Jimmy Lloyd out there. Lloyd, I guess, going to kind of regroup. Oh. 
Boy, going over to that to that structure that he checked on earlier. Is now Brandon Kirk and Jimmy Lloyd are, are, are both arranging furniture. Yeah, they're, they're both maneuvering things. They both got ideas of what they want to do to their opponent, but. Wood just straddled across those two chairs as Jimmy Lloyd is on the outside of the ring and Brandon Kirk is on the inside. Kirk now a bit of a double decker there. God, just, Kirk just, just carelessly throwing that. You gotta do what you can. Hey, I mean, you know, you're you gotta cause fight. as much damage as possible. Just imagine in the middle of a fight, just. There we go. There we go. Oh man, that looks that looks like that's gonna fuck somebody up in the future. I'm nervous. I'm just gonna say that. All right, Brandon Kirk now scaling the cage, heading to the outside. Yeah, I'm pretty nervous also. Um, ooh, some nice cuts. Oh, right into that chair by Jimmy Lloyd. <laughs> Jimmy Lloyd was waiting on Brandon Kirk. Face first into the steel on the outside this time. And now, now Lloyd looks like he's trying to get back into the cage. Oh, God. Just ate that chair to the back. Yeah, Lloyd's it, still heading to the top. He took that and he looked at Brandon Kirk. He's like, are you done with that chair now? Oh. I'm going to keep going. But oh, this is dangerous. These guys... Fighting on the side of the, the cage. No, no, no. Oh, my God. Going straight down through a couple of doors, through the chairs, to the floor. Uh, I don't know. It looked like maybe one, the back of one of their heads may have hit that railing. Good God. Both men are down. Outside of the ring. Looks like Jimmy Lloyd's uh, coming to first. You might be right. Maybe uh, Brandon Kirk's head hit that guardrail, maybe. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, he's breathing heavy, but he's not moving. No, not not at all. And, and now we get some stirring from Kirk. I think completely just destroyed on the outside of the ring. He might be trying to figure out where exactly he is right now. Yeah, you're in trouble. That's where you are. It's a... Lloyd now. Looks like he's going to make his way back into the ring. Oh, he's, he's on the wrong side of you getting... Oh, the oh, no. Oh, no. We, just, we just had a fire alarm. You don't need oh, another oh, one oh, of them. Casey Cattall. What is Casey Cattall doing? Casey Cattall on the side of the cage. Yeah, she saw that Jimmy Lloyd saw her. It's better. Maybe try to come from the opposite angle. Well, I don't know. She's climbing in those heels. My God, she's climbing in those heels. Casey Cattall. Oh. oh, no. Casey Cattall. Check on Brandon. That's not true. That's possible. Don't you never leave. know. Oh, wait a second. Now both oh. on top. Yeah. Light tube. Oh, Another. my gosh. Lighter fluid and a lighter being wielded by Brandon Kirk. Oh, come on. What are you thinking? Jimmy Lloyd is the winner of TOD 17. And it's just I don't squirting. know that they had anything like this going on that day. Good God, there's another fire in the combat zone. Oh, no. We've got that. Oh, oh Jesus Christ. Down goes Kirk through the flames, through the glass, through the barbed wire, through the wood. Jesus, into the... Kirk's got to have 
have got to be burned. Burned, cut, burned, bruised. cut, bruised, everything. Jimmy Lloyd now going to make his way back into the ring. Cover him, Jimmy. Put this thing to bed. Cover one. What? At a one. You got to be kidding me. At fucking one. You got to be kidding me. Kicks out. Jesus Christ. The rope hurt through another pane of glass. All the way out one, here. Two, two, three. That's it. serious time to recover from this as Jimmy Lloyd tries to find his way out of this this cage of death. What a night here on Fight TV from the combat zone from 333 Preston Avenue from the Coliseum for MLJ. I am Khalif Bryant. Thank you for joining us on Fight TV for Cage of Death 21.